Whether you are thinking about becoming a restaurateur or you are already in the business, Michael Politz has written a must read, The Food and Beverage Magazine's Guide to Restaurant Success. Pick up your copy today at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Books A Million, or wherever fine books are sold. Food and Beverage Magazine Live, bringing food and beverage to life with your hosts, James Beard Award winner Jennifer English and Food and Beverage Magazine publisher Michael Politz. Featuring leaders in the hospitality, branded food and beverage, and CPG industries, many of whom are Jennifer and Michael's friends in the business. For an informal and informative conversation where friends in the business share the latest intel, ideas, and best practices. Live, juicy inside scoop from the tastemakers, newsmakers, bread bakers, drink shakers, spoon lickers, clam diggers, farms, foodies, and friends of the food and beverage magazine world. Here are your hosts, Jennifer English and Michael Politz. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Food and Beverage Magazine Live. I'm Jennifer English, your editor at large, and we're taking you someplace today very close to my heart. I love talking to kids about food. I love feeding kids, and I love empowering kids to make good food choices. We're going to talk about that a little later with one of our most special guests that we've had on in a while, because it's really, truly near and dear to my heart. I heard something the other day. Someone said, I only do things three ways, and I've adapted that. So we like to think of food being done three ways. Um, uh, convenient, delicious, and healthy. Okay. And you can choose any two of those things. So what are the two you're going to choose? Convenient, delicious, or healthy? And historically, we've, as parents, had to make the choice, not with an ampersand, but an or. You can have this and that, but then you can't have this other thing. You have to have this or that. My guest today, Joanna Parker, is the co-founder of a company called Yumble, a meal delivery service with exceptionally good, clean, delicious, healthy, convenient food for kids. She's gone and completely created the culinary unicorn for kids because she does all three things. It was practically unheard of. Now, when I tell you this, it, it sounds like it should be, well, simple, right? And it is. It's exquisitely simple and clean and delicious. We're going to let her talk about what the service is, but you get convenience, you get delicious, and you get healthy. You don't have to leave one behind anymore, thanks to Yumble. Now, I also want to start by, by imagining that when we cook for anyone, we cook with intention. And the intention in the future of food that we're seeing all over the place is that we're intending a lot of things. Convenience seems to be one of those big factors. So for most of those people choosing between the three things, they're choosing convenience and one of the other two, healthy and delicious. And like that has gone the way of all things. 60% of the food that you and I are going to eat by the end of this decade is going to come delivered to our homes. Why should we have to forego one of those important factors healthy, delicious, convenient. Why should we have to give one up? Thankfully, we don't. Joanna Parker from Yumble joins us now from her kitchens. I love this. You are like the modern day. I don't know if you know who Margaret Rudkin is, but she invented and created Pepperidge Farm. You're like the modern day Pepperidge Farm for us. I'm thrilled to have you here. How are you? I am great. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Jennifer. I know it may be an old fashioned reference, but I grew up on the East Coast with Pepperidge Farm and it was started by a mom who's just looking for a better way to feed her kids healthy foods in her own time and place. That's kind of, I think, what I understand you did. Can you talk about how Yumble was born? Yes, that's exactly how it was born. I'm a mom of three. And at the time, my children were one years old, three years old and five years old. And something that was always extremely important to me was healthy eating for my children, 
But even more than that was healthy choices and a positive relationship with food for my children. And as I struggled to get a nutritious and delicious dinner on the table every single day that my children would actually eat, I realized that I was losing it from how much time and frustration this was taking. And so I complained to my husband, I guess, too many times. And he said, well, why don't you do something? There must be a better way. And so I posted actually on a Facebook mommy group asking if there was anybody else out there who wanted me to cook for their children. And without them seeing a menu or knowing who I was, I was just bombarded with yes, 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 yes. Cooking dinner for my children is impossible. We need help. And that's really how it spiraled. It, word of mouth, people started telling their friends about it. And I slowly, but pretty quickly, actually grew the company from just a handful of customers to nationwide. Let's talk about the fact that not only do you need to put a healthy, delicious meal on the table at dinner time, you have to do it at least three times a day. And kids love snacks. So you may be cooking four or five times a day for your kids. And you began to recognize that it isn't just, I have a duty to give my kid at least one meal a day. I mean, most of us are fortunate enough to have healthy children that want to eat more than once a day. So a hundred percent. Can you talk about how this is not just, you know, as easy as breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, again, this started out of my personal pain point and yeah. my pain point at the time really was dinner. And something I've done with Yumble from the very, very beginning is really listen to our customers. And so very quickly, I realized that dinner was not the only problem. It was the multitude of snacks and the three formal meals of the day for kids. And so we very quick, quickly incorporated lunch options, breakfast options, and now we have snack options too. Um, and something that really excites me about the snacks is that oftentimes snacks for kids can be a missed opportunity to give them nutrition. And, you know, it, it shouldn't be. It should be another opportunity where they're getting in some protein that they need, added fiber that they're otherwise not getting, healthy fats, not just sugars. So it's really the way you look at the whole day of a child, not just any single meal or snack. Uh, first of all, I have to tell you that as somebody who spent my career in food, 25 plus years, uh, there's a part of me that wants smart people to, to come up with a better name than snacks in the American cuisine culture. Because I think we owe it to our kids and ourselves and our community to give a fun, sexier, delicious, more nutritious word than the same word that's used to describe some of the problems that we face and are fighting and bucking up against by doing the things that we do as parents trying to feed our kid healthier things. Um, one of the things I did is Crate and Barrel used to have this fantastic fondue plate. It was kind of like a ceramic bento box with four equal rectangular compartments. I bought like four or five of them. And every meal I gave my kid four full servings of anything that was healthy. And my kid knew that he could have as much or as little of any one or all of the things on the dish. And he always had that choice because the <clears throat> choice piece yep. is so important. Empowering our kids regarding food. If you don't empower them positively, you empower them negatively. And if I hear one more parent tell me about how they fight because that's the place their kid is asserting their first assertions of self and self-awareness. I got to tell you, when you presented everything to me about Yumble, I cheered. Can you talk about how important that choice is? Yeah. You know, it's something that's really fascinated me over the years as I've been in this industry um, and watching my own children, which is kids in, th there's this constant struggle in parenting between empowering our children to do things on their own and doing things for our children to, you know, make our days easier or, or, or even teach them. But mealtime for some reason has become a part of the day where parents are less comfortable handing over the reins. So while we're all comfortable watching our child struggle 
to, you know, fill the tower out of blocks and it tumbles. Tie their shoes. And tie their shoes. Exactly. I always use that example. There are, there are obstacles that we allow our children. And in fact, we encourage our children to work through, to problem solve through, because that's what makes them thriving, independent adults one day. But at mealtime, we hold that leash really, really tight. Right. We want to be in control. We want to tell them what they're eating. We want to tell them what time they're eating, whether or not we know that their body is hungry or not hungry, because um, that's what fits into our schedule. That's when we penciled in, you know, kids' dinner time. Um, and what I've noticed is that in every part of parenting, if you present your child with an A or a B, instead of presenting them with a yes or a no, where they'll often choose the no, they're going to pick A or B. And all of a sudden, they feel so empowered. And so that's that's really what kind of spiraled Yumble into this whole concept of empowering kids to make their own choices and rewarding them for doing that because it not only makes mealtime much easier for parents, so great parent hack right over there, but it actually gets into the much deeper psyche of a child at mealtime and around healthy food and, and making them realize that they actually can choose these healthy things and be excited about it the same way they can choose what toy they play with at playtime. What you're doing is you're nourishing the full whole child. You are nourishing that child's development for self-assertion. Exactly. And like I said, mealtime comes up or feeding our children comes up so many times throughout any single day, let alone the span of a week or month or years, right. that if we can use that opportunity to actually nourish the child in a deeper way, we're not missing that opportunity. And in addition to just eliminating the struggle, we're actually making it a positive moment between a parent and child. Can you talk to, I mean, the thing that doesn't make sense to me on some level is we're more of a foodie culture than we've ever been. As parents, you know, we talk about restaurants, we collect cookbooks, some of us cook, some of us don't. We watch food shows, even if we don't cook, we go to restaurants, we're, you know, obsessed with food and drink. It's really a part of our culture now. How is it that it seems to coincide with this I don't know, disconnect when it comes to feeding our kids? I, I think it's a really interesting question. I think that it's what I said earlier, which is that parents have a difficult time giving their child power at mealtime. They're just as interested in feeding them healthy food and exposing them to a variety of cuisines and, and, and meals. Um, and they want all of those things that we see in our culture for their children. There's just this inability of parents to believe that their child can actually make those own choices for themselves at mealtime. All right. Before we go any further, what is Yumble? I realize we didn't have you start off because I'm so eager to dive into this because, again, mom to mom. And and I'm, I, I was thrilled with everything. you Like if I started this company, I would do the things you're doing. I'm like thrilled to find you. You have no idea. Thank you. I mean, I cook for my kid. It's not for my kid. It's for all our kids. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Talk about what Yumble is. And if you have any of the packages there, because I don't have them all the ones you, we I test apologize. all the ones you sent us. I actually have them right here. Hang on. So sorry to do that, but literally I no, have them. Thank you. Of, I just had them out of reach. So they're meals that come and you can see the meal and then they come with these wonderful, clean, bright bands that have all the nutrition information. And let's just start off with, with breakfast. But, but before we do that, what is Yumble? So at the very basics, Yumble is a weekly subscription. We send fully prepared, so no work or no cooking, no cleanup for parents, fully prepared meals designed just for kids. And to your point about your intro, Jennifer, we are nutritious, delicious, and also convenient. Because if you eliminate any one of those three pillars, as far as we're concerned, well, then it's not an answer for feeding your children. And so it really has to hit all three of those, those buckets. But way more than just being a, a box that arrives at your doorstep every week with your meals, we're a full system that helps parents reward their children for making positive choices at mealtime. Right. And so we're really working to make mealtime easier by giving parents the strategies, by empowering children to make their own choices, and also delivering convenient meals.
you are sending food that's fully cooked, ready to heat up and give to your kids. And I don't want to say that it's, you know, that it's not something, but if all you think you have the option of giving your kids are like mac and cheese and uh, chicken nuggets, and that's, that's all that's existed when you go out to restaurants, that's all mm -hmm. that exists in so many places, this is a really great solution beyond that because in fact, you also do a fantastically healthy, nutritious mac and cheese and, and some other things. But I wanted to start off with this turkey sausage and eggs because you do start off with breakfast. These are portion size to kids. And one of the things I wanted to point out was that this has complete nutrition for that section of a meal. And it's not overwhelming in terms of like a big pile of food. Like it's really thoughtfully done. Everything is thoughtfully done. And then it's expertly prepared. So literally all we had to do was heat it up and we don't keep a microwave in the house. So we did it all in, the, in a toaster oven and it worked beautifully. Yeah. I want to compliment you on that. Uh, talk a little bit about what you did to decide what to do for breakfast and what people are ordering. Are people ordering breakfast? Are they just ordering the dinners? Are they just ordering the snacks? Yeah. People love the breakfasts. Um, the morning rush is, you know, undeniable. And so being able to have something, and I, I know if you, if you don't have Yumble in your refrigerator, you're standing there in the morning, you've got about six minutes before, you know, the school bus comes or you've got to load your kids in for carpool and you're rattling off things that you want to serve your children. Here it is. You can open up your refrigerator. They know their choices. They get to choose. They're in charge. You eliminate that morning battle and you eliminate the minutes that you don't have of, you know, trying to come up with something that they'll eat. And so what I really love about the breakfast is it really gets the day off on the right foot. The kids get something nutritious to your question about, you know, what goes into our breakfast protein. I make sure that all of our breakfasts are packed with protein. Um, as, as a mom, I want to make sure my kids get a solid serving of protein before they right. you know jump off to school. It kicks off their day the right way. If they miss lunch or skip lunch or whatever it is, I know that they've at least had that serving. So it's really I want to talk. I want to talk about um, what what a crowd pleaser the orange you glad chicken bowl. This was so popular with everybody here. Everybody took like one bite and said this was delicious. Oh good. Um, talk a little bit about this because it was a big hit. Yeah, so that one has one of our signature dish, uh, signature sauces in it that we've worked really hard. Um, it's our Asian sauce that has that's sweetened with just natural fruits. And so what we've tried to do with Yumble is we mask some vegetables and fruits, but we also present them so that kids can learn that they actually really do like a real piece of broccoli or a real piece of cauliflower. Um, and so the orange you glad chicken bowl is a great example where the, the sauce has some hidden vitamins and nutrients in it, uh, but we're serving it with other vegetables as well. The other thing that everybody here was fighting over was the snack of the three cheese bagel melt and snack bites. You'd think the bagel was the best part. In fact, the snack bites, we were fighting over the snack bites. We were cutting them into quarters and people were like, <laughs> so, what on earth are these snack bites? The snack bites are really uh, protein packed, low sugar, high fiber, all the things I checked off for you about what I really feel should be in every snack that we give our kids. And I, by the way, I totally agree that there should be another name because I've tried to teach my children that a snack comes from the refrigerator in the same way that your meals come from the refrigerator, or at least a component of it should. Um, that's how you know you're getting something that has a little bit of, of nutrition in it. Yeah. Um, so those snack bites are a low sugar, high fiber, high protein, sweet treat at the end of your meal or the middle of your meal, whatever the child chooses. And, and, and the bagel is wonderful too. Everything we tried was good. In fact, it makes me want to like, I've never walked in, Well, it's not true. I walked in a couple of times with people and they ordered everything on the menu, but I literally wanted to order one of everything on the menu because I want to try everything because not only are they what they say they're going to be, they actually give you a little something extra. And I'm not describing this articulately enough because you've gone, especially with like the turkey sausage and, and eggs. It's not just what it seems. It's like a little bit more. You've really thoughtfully taken something that you know, or you think you know, and brought it and elevated it to a place. You have literally lifted 
every single one of these dishes, these entrees, these breakfasts, these snacks, you have lifted these to a place that I don't think they've been commercially available before. I appreciate that. We have spent many, many years uh, iterating and improving on our food. We have a fantastic team of um, food scientists, chefs, and and most importantly, parents and children who, you know, give their input on the meals. And we do, we try to make every meal, as I always say, we've got two lists of, of checks we need to fix, hit. One of them is for parents. It's got to hit the nutritional buckets and uh, convenient buckets. But for kids, it's got to be something fun. And it's got to be a little exciting. If it's just a boring meal, then the kids aren't going to get excited about it. And it's really important to us. It's part of our mission that kids get excited about eating healthy foods. I have to say, it's probably no mistake that your logo looks very much like Eric Carl's Very Hungry Caterpillar. Mm -hmm. Can you talk, what does Yumble mean? So Yumble, the name Yumble was actually born because I wanted something that didn't actually mean anything. I wanted it to be playful enough that it didn't have a, a definite definition. Um, but I love that it had the word yum in it. So it conveyed something around mealtime, but it also rhymed with a lot of really silly words like fumble, bumble, crumble, tumble. Um, and I thought it was just a very playful word, which is what I really wanted to make healthy mealtime for kids a much more playful time and a lot less dramatic and, and tear filled. So I want to give you the last word on this. And in all the time that you've spent growing this brand and this company, what have you discovered about the, the, the essential link between kids and food that none of us would have known before? What have you had the insight or the awareness or the aha about kids and food through doing this? It's a, it's a great question. I, I, I think there's two things. The first thing I would say is that as, as kids, um, we, what we need to focus on for kids is their relationship with the food. And it's really not about any single meal. We've got to, we as parents have to be able to zoom out and get a larger picture of the nutrition that our children are getting. Right. Um, Remembering that they're people. Some days they're hungrier than others. Some days they're not as hungry. And so we shouldn't come to the meal with a preconceived notion of what our child should be eating, how much they should be eating, or when they're eating. It's it's really um, allowing them to, to develop that intuition and, and listening to their own bodies is something that I think is the most important part of, of teaching our children. I have a daughter who struggles with a gluten intolerance. She's sensitive to dairy. And whenever her stomach starts hurting her, I always explain to her, that's your body trying to talk to you. And we need to learn to listen to it because I'm not inside your body. I don't know how it feels exactly. Only you do. Um, and you need to learn to listen to that language. And so I think as parents, when we can take away the stress of preparing the food and cooking it, and then, and then we're looking at the pots that are piled up and we need to clean them, mealtime can become so stressful that we don't allow our children to listen to their bodies. And I think that is something that later on leads to all of the poor habits and, and you know unfortunate health conditions that many Americans have. And so I think that what I've learned is the most important thing that we can do as parents is help our children to listen to their bodies, make their own smart choices, and really encourage them and empower them to do that. Let's take this one step further. What's the feedback you're getting from parents and how this is changing kids in relation to food? Are you seeing kids becoming interested in showing, teaching, sharing, making for other kids, for their siblings, for their friends? Totally. Once you empower kids at mealtime to make their own choices, they start feeling like a leader in the kitchen and in the dining area. And so they spread that. I've seen, you know, we hear from customers all the time, and I see it with my own children. Like They're much more excited to start cutting vegetables in the kitchen and participating in, in the cooking and even the cleaning because it, it's part of the process. Um, and so it really just cultivates a, a real sense of responsibility and ownership at mealtime, which is really amazing for kids. So if I were to subscribe, tell me how that works. Tell me what comes to my house. How many meals... Do you send? Because all of a sudden I just start thinking about 
four or five meals a day for 30, all of a sudden 150 meals, where am I going to put 150 meals? So you can choose. We have a few different plans. They range from six meals to about uh, 16 meals. You can, or 24 meals, actually. Um, you can choose whichever plan works best for you. You get to choose whichever breakfast you want, lunches you want, however many of each you want. Um, if you have multiple kids and they all want something different, you can choose all different meals. If you want them to eat the same food and it feels a little more family style, you can do it that way. It's a very flexible plan. Um, and the meals come every week. So you just choose exactly what it is that you want. And are you still the chef? I am not the chef. I, uh, I test everything in my house. I send a lot of my own recipes. I work with our chefs, but I'm, uh, I'm not cooking every single meal that gets delivered. I, I want to, you're going to, this is going to sound funny. I would love to host a Yumble dinner party on the show. That would be fun. With like a couple of chefs and a couple of kids. So we could talk about how it all tastes. Cause that's how my brain works. I really want to hear what the kids have to say, but until I can do that, I'm just going to have to say thank you for making time to come and chat with us today and for creating this really great solution. I, I can't compliment you highly enough on what you've done. It may seem like it's obvious, like certainly somebody had to have done this. The fact that they didn't speaks to one of the things that really needed to get fixed post COVID. And I thank you for doing that. I appreciate it very much, Jennifer, and I enjoyed chatting with you. Cheers. How did you meet these fantastic men, Ian, Paul? It's so lovely to have you here with us. Welcome. And I raise my glass to welcome you. Welcome. The incredible Vanessa Hudgens and Oliver Trevina. Hello and welcome. Hi. Cheers. Hi. How are you doing? I want to talk about the fact that the incredible Padma Lakshmi is joining us. Our extraordinary friend, Diane Mina, joins us from her home. Tower, who joins us today from his home in the beautiful Merida, Mexico. He joins us now, Chef Ming Tsai. Aloha and welcome. What's going on, Jen? Good to see you.